I make. I gotta come up with the bass line now. You see the beautiful mac and cheese going on. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're making one of my favorite things to eat. It's called mac and cheese. We're making a Gouda mac and cheese. Gouda love it. Gouda love it. Mac and cheese. If you love Gouda, you're gonna love this. <laughs> okay. So let's make some mac and cheese today, y'all. We're gonna make the best mac and cheese. Um, one of the best mac and cheeses I've ever had because we're using our Gouda today. Gouda cheese. Gouda cheese, y'all. One of the best cheeses on the planet. But we're gonna start off with some boiling water. Got my water boiling here. I'm gonna season it up with some salt. Generous amount of that. Let that hang out. I've also got some pasta. Using an elbow pasta. We're gonna cook that. Till is what we call al dente. Al dente just means firm to the bite. And it's gonna cook for two to three minutes less than what the box calls for. So I think this calls for like seven minutes cooking time. How, does, how much does it call for? Like seven minutes. But we're gonna cook it like three minutes less because we're gonna put it in the oven and it's gonna continue cooking. So give that a stir. Wanna make sure that that water is salty like the ocean because that's where a lot of that flavor is gonna come from. Let's talk about our Gouda. Some Gouda cheese, yo. Gouda, Gouda. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut off the rind of the cheese. But let's talk about what this, what this Gouda is. Gouda is actually a Danish cheese. It's a Danish cheese and it's actually from a place called Gouda in the Netherlands. I've heard it's a kind of nifty place, but I've never been there. Have you been there? I don't know. Anyway. Gouda cheese comes from cow's milk traditionally, but you can also get it like sheep's milk, you know, goat's milk. We're using a cow milk cheese. This is like a Danish Gouda. It was got this waxy out of outer coating, which we call the rind. I used to work at a cheese shop in Buffalo, New York, and I fell in love with cheese. I fell in love with Gouda more specifically, so I was like, you know what? I gotta put this in some mac and cheese, dude, because it's gonna be dope. So we'll remove the waxy coating. It's not edible. Some rinds on cheeses are edible. This, however, is not. So it's just used to protect the cheese. Cut off that base. All about that base, about that base. Cool. So, let's talk about the next star of our ingredient. Smoked bacon Gouda. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this because it's got bacon bits all lined in there. All that porky goodness and fat and stuff. It's dope. So, I'm gonna cut off this rind. Now you can peel it off depending on like how thick it is. It just comes right off. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna grate up our cheese. Oh, let's talk about our last cheese here. We're using a cheddar cheese, grated it up right into a bowl. Cow's milk cheese all throughout this. We're gonna use three cheeses. We're gonna now grate up these cheeses. Thank you to our wonderful food stylist sitting on the side over there, Sade. We making mac and cheese! We making mac and cheese! Hey, hey, hey! It's all about that mac and cheese. All about that mac and cheese. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, the cool thing about mac and cheese is you can use as little or as much as you want. You can add four cheeses, five cheeses, six cheeses. Just have a cheese old party. Perfect. And our bacon gouda. I saw this in my grocery store and I was like, I gotta do something with this. It's got bacon inside of it, right? You gotta do something with it. Nice. Give it a taste, actually. Mmm. Wow. That's delicious. It's got bacon going through it. Woo! Mmm. Nice and tangy and sharp. It's good, yo. This is the kind of work you, you tell your guests to do when they come over. Like, Can I help? Like, but yeah, go grate some cheese. All right, cool. So, our cheese is grated. Looks beautiful. I'm gonna just add this into our big bowl with the rest of our cheeses. Our pasta is probably almost ready. Don't try this at home. Yep, perfect al dente. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drain the colander and then rinse it under cold water. So shut our heat off, take our pot. Come here, baby. So we're using two pounds of elbow pasta, right? Under cold water. 
The reason we're draining under cold water is so that we cut the cooking process. Because we're going to add eggs, we're going to add milk, we're going to add butter, and we're going to bake it again. So we don't want those eggs to scramble. So we're just going to let it drain under the cold water. Our pasta's done. It's delicious. It's cooled. We're going to grab our bowl. All right, so now we're going to add into this bowl, got some beautiful eggs, three eggs over there. We're gonna add carnation milk. This is very traditional, my dad made it this way. Don't ask me why he used it, I don't really know, but that's what he uses, so just use it, please. Use it, okay. Carnation milk. Comes in a can. And we're also gonna use some melted butter here. And we're using like four tablespoons of butter, melted butter, in there. Cool. So, give this a big whisk. Season it up a little bit, a little bit of salt. We got a lot of salt in our cheeses, so we don't need to add a crazy ton amount of salt. Plus, we've got the bacon in there, right? So, just a little bit of salt. Some cayenne pepper. I like it kind of fiery, but obviously, if you're making this for friends and they don't like it too hot, don't add a lot of cayenne. Uh, some garlic powder. I'm using plenty of the garlic powder. You know, this is like in the ghetto days, we used to make this with adobo seasoning. I love adobo, but you can't really control the amounts of spices that's in the adobo. So I like to control it myself. I like more garlic. I like a little bit more heat. Whisk them eggs, yo. Whisk them, whisk them eggs, yo. Eggs look good. What we're gonna do is bring over our pasta. We're gonna pour in our pasta. Oops, got a little messy. And coat it in that mixture. So this is like a project my dad would do in his restaurant when I was a kid. He'd have a big bowl, huge pans of this mac and cheese just ready to go. It was like an every weekend thing. Kind of reminds me of that every time I do this. Puts me back in the memory of that restaurant, you know? Cool, so that's going to sit on the side for now. Bring over your bowl, your uh, baking dish. We got a nine by 13 baking dish. We've greased up. Butter at room temperature, unsalted butter. We're gonna give this a light season with some garlic powder. The higher you go when you sprinkle, the more control, the more surface it hits versus like doing it like that. So just keep that in mind. All right, don't go crazy, just enough. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer. We're gonna do this in three layers. So one layer of pasta. Is this at a good angle, Chris? You want a better angle? You good? That's Chris, guys. Chris is our DP. He's awesome, check out his YouTube channel. He's got a dope YouTube channel. Pasta goes in there. Just give this a toss. Try to combine your cheeses. That bacon, that gouda, that cheddar. So I'm doing just a little bit of cheese in between the layers. And on the top layer, I'm gonna give it a whole lot of cheese. Whole lot more cheese. So we're gonna add our second layer of pasta. Just spread it out with the back of your spoon. Nice. And more cheese. Woo! Cheese party. I mean, come on. This, what's more comforting than mac and cheese? Chris, come get a look at this. This is cool. One more, one more lay of pasta right on top. Very even. If you mound it in the middle, just spread it out with the back of your spoon. Cool. You want it to hit the top, because you want that cheese on the top to have that melting action, yo. You feel me? All right, so some more cheese right on the top there. Make it rain that cheese, make it rain. And make it rain that cheese, make it rain. And pat it down, pat it down, pat it down. Let's make sure it's an even layer. Sometimes you get like these big clumps of cheese. Mac and cheese, ready to go. So we're gonna put it in a 375 degree oven. I preheat it, whoa, this is heavy, my man. Woo! So we're gonna put it into 375 degree oven, Fahrenheit, and we're gonna let it bake for about, I don't know, 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, because it gets nice, nice and brown on the top, nice and golden and gooey and cheesy. Delicious. Yeah. Woo! 
Look at that mac and cheese. Look at that mac and cheese. I'm gonna find a plate, because I need to eat this. Can I have a plate, please? Uh, we'll go with the purple one. Purple one's cool, nice and sexy. So, ooh, look at that cheese. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna plate that up. I like to give it a little smash. Good on mac and cheese! Done! <laughs> All right, we're gonna give this a try. Look at this Gouda mac and cheese, y'all. I know you're jealous. I know you're looking at me like drooling right now. Everybody's watching this. Woo! Oh man. That Gouda? That Gouda though. Really doing this thing. Oh my gosh, and that smoked bacon flavor. It's so creamy and rich. A little bit tangy, a little bit sharp. Man, I could just eat this whole thing for myself. Until next time. Thanks for watching Liza's Comfort Kitchen. We'll see you later. Peace out, homies. Mm. Hey, what's up, guys? Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? It's very easy. Just subscribe right over there. Click that button. You can do it. Thanks.